What's happening? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Byte for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now we told you they'd sell a ton of iPads and the big A announced they sold 3 million iPads in the first three days. Now it's a combination of minis and iPad 4s. Apple didn't reveal the breakdown, but it doubled their previous record of 1.5 million units sold for the Wi-Fi iPad 3 just seven months ago. Now Tim Cook said they're practically sold out of iPad minis, but not actually sold out. So. If you're one of the people holding out for a Retina Display iPad Mini, you're in luck. Dew News reports that AU Optronics, the company that currently supplies the 7.9 inch displays for the first gen Mini, are already working on the display for the second gen Mini and will reportedly have double the resolution at 2048 by 1536. Now, I think it's still a great product if you're willing to drop the cash on it. And guess what? I don't have to lust after every Apple product. It can't even fit in my pants. Oh, it's done, Ned. Yeah. Oh. Comfortably. And who said the iPad mini isn't a good size? It's perfect for the guys at Soundman who are already installed one inside the dashboard of a 2012 Volkswagen CC. Look at how it fits so perfectly. Okay, now I'm getting one. I'm kidding guys, but one product I'm going to have my way with are the new iMacs that are expected to be available to order starting with the 21.5 inch model this month and then the 27 incher in December. But the future of the guts inside of the iMac could look very different. Bloomberg reports their sources tell them that Apple plans to one day abandon Intel chips and it will be mobile chips that eventually run inside its computer lineup. Bob Mansfield, senior VP of Apple's New Technologies Group, is apparently leading the chip research, and the article says Apple has ambitious plans for the future with their desktops, but Apple will still continue to rely on Intel for at least a few more years. Another thing you probably still won't see on an iMac, Blu-ray. In an interview with Time, Phil Schiller said native Blu-ray support will likely never come to the Mac. His Blu-ray alternative is iTunes, and Blu-ray comes with complex issues that make it a not-so-great technology, according to Schiller. Now, all he really had to say was, hey, dummy, we can't fit a Blu-ray in our 5mm thin iMac. All right, guys, in iOS news, Apple has released iOS 6.1 to developers. One of the new features will allow you to now get movie tickets through Siri using data and information from Fandango, which is pretty slick. Now, there aren't any other major new features here, but some behind-the-scenes improvements to Maps let developers search for map-based addresses and points of interest as well. Now, we all know Google is still developing their own Map app, and they plan on submitting it to the App Store later this year, according to The Guardian. It took a long time for their Google Search app to get approved, and we'll see how or if Apple approves Google's app since Maps can already be accessed in Safari, and it's a direct competitor to Apple's own Maps. We also told you guys to expect Microsoft Office for iOS in 2013. The Verge is officially reporting that it will come in early 2013 and included a few small screenshots that will allow users to have basic access to view offline documents on the go. But if you want editing capabilities, you'll need a paid Office 365 subscription. All right, on to the quick bites. We know about Apple and Samsung. Yeah, they've had their beef, but it was Vernet X that was able to pull off what Samsung couldn't. A Texas judge ruled that Apple's FaceTime function for the iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad infringed on four Vernet X patents, and Apple has been told to pay $368.2 million in damage. Vernet X also is planning on seeking an order to block further use of its inventions, which really means they want more money in a settlement. And in a great way to pay tribute to the late Steve Jobs, Pixar headquarters recently named their main building in honor of SJ. It was Jobs who invested $10 million to purchase Pixar from Lucasfilms in 1986. The animation studio was then later sold to Disney for $7.4 billion. All right, guys, let's wrap things up with a giveaway that may not be for all of you, but if you know me, I'm a huge NBA fan, and I have some of the craziest dribbling skills and jump shots that you've ever seen. I believe I can fly. <laughs> That's what I actually wear when I play. So to celebrate the start of the season, I'm giving out five codes for the game NBA 2K13 on iOS devices. All you guys have to do is email us at theapplebyte at cnet.com. Tell me who your favorite player of all time was, and don't say Kwame Brown because he's mine.
But to make this even bigger and better, we're also giving away a copy of my favorite game, NBA 2K13 for the Xbox 360, and one Big Daddy Dynasty Edition for the PS3. So do something amazing with Photoshop and the NBA to make me laugh, and you might be the lucky winners. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's show. Email me at theapplebyteacnet.com, and I will answer you. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another bite of the apple.